Hey everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, and this video is part two of my Bob Rital three-part interview. Uh, he is the Guinness Book of World Records holder for having the largest comic book collection in the world. Um, he basically gives me a tour of his room and let me tell you, his collection of not just comics but other things is incredible. So I highly recommend watching part one, uh, which gives you a little more background about how he won the, uh, the record. I'd like to give a huge thanks again to Bob Rital uh, for taking the time out of his day to chat with me about comics, movies, and everything between. He is one of the most knowledgeable people I've ever spoken to about comics. I highly recommend visiting his website, comicspectrum.com. Uh, it's an amazing resource for comic book knowledge, and he has his own blog on there too, so you can kind of get to keep up with him and what's going on in his life. If you are new to my channel, please hit the like and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Hey everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am joined by Mr. Bob Rital, the creator of ComicSpectrum.com and the reigning Guinness Book of World Records holder for the largest comic book collection in the world. What I do need to do though is I need to put together, I'm, I've been thinking about it, I got to put together a series of blogs about selling your collection because I get people I get several emails a month from people wanting to sell me collections just because they find my name on the internet and it's like, hey, you've got the world's largest comic collection. Why don't you buy my comic collection that I inherited from my uncle? And it's like, you know, I've probably got every comic book in that comic collection. That's why I, you know. Well, that's, that's weird that people are contacting you to sell you comics. Normally they yeah. contact you to buy comics from you. Yeah, it's weird. I get it all the time. So, but I, I kind of like have this advice that I give people on that. And I got to like write it down and kind of codify it because my kids could use it. Because, you know, there's like a lot of things you probably want to do to like not get ripped off, you know? Oh, absolutely. And yeah. that's the, that's the thing. It's like, it's like whether it's will, willful or not, I mean, you're not going to get full value of any of the stuff unless you take the time to sell it out item by item yourself on eBay or mm -hmm. something, right? Because anytime you sell it to a dealer, and it's just, it's business, right? I mean, a, a dealer, they've got overhead, you know, they have their labor of having to take that collection in and do stuff with it and then they have to turn it around and whether they sell it in their shop or their online store or conventions or ebay or whatever it's going to take them some amount of time so they're tying up their capital for some period of time so you know there's there's no way you're going to get you know it's like if you're lucky you'll get maybe 40 percent of what it's worth and probably not even that i mean most dealers they work on margins where they might give you 10 or 20 cents on the dollar mm -hmm. on stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it just, you have to, you have to be aware of that or else, you know, but on the other hand, you got to like watch out, not get totally hosed either if you've got some actually really valuable books like, you know, old key Marvel or DC books, you know, like where, I mean, I've talked to dealers where, oh, yeah, some guy came in and I bought this whole collection off him for $200 and it had like, you know, Hulk number one through six in it, you know, and it's like, well, he just ripped that person off, you know. Well, have you ever gotten uh, an offer from someone to buy your entire collection? No. Hmm. Do you Do you know what your entire collection is worth? No, I don't. I don't really do value really so i don't i don't think about that yeah i mean yeah. all i know is like i've gotten the only time anybody's ever offered to buy something is i got somebody one time offered me money to one of my batman covers oh wow wait what what is that a what is that an original those are original art wow is um are those like things you collect too um yeah i have a lot of original art that's awesome. Do you I have a lot of original art. I have a lot of sketches. I have a lot of lithographs. And little mini busts and statues, I see. Mini busts and statues and just ephemera of all kinds. I mean, 
Um, original art is kind of fun. You know, it's, let's say original art was fun. <laughs> the original art market in the last five to six years has gotten so crazy that I've been priced out of it. And I don't buy it anymore. Mm. Um, it's just insane. You'll have like people selling just like a panel page from some indie book know for two hundred dollars or something like that and it's just like yeah but yeah the two hundred dollars i'd rather go out and use it to buy more comics for my collection you know it just back in the day it wasn't that expensive i mean you could buy lots of original art it wasn't crazy expensive you could also get sketches um yeah ebay ruined that the same way that it kind of ruined comics collecting <laughs> it's like mm. one you know i think you know like when you saw these crazy escalation in prices it was kind of like a combination of marvel movies yep and t and the tv shows and all that stuff combined with the immediate access to a worldwide audience over fast sure yeah. available internet you know yeah. where it's just like now i have the whole world as my customer base yeah, and, you well, know, you're, not, you're like, competing with people everywhere. You're not just competing with the person next to you. You're right. competing with everybody. So it, it really drove the market, you know, up. And then there's like all these people with just crazy, stupid amounts of money that are yeah, that helps. kind of investing in this stuff and they just don't care what they pay for some of it. It's just like, it just drives the price up. Not a bad thing, right? I don't, sure. it's not a knock, it's just, I'm not going to pay, you know, it's like now I bought these Batman covers in 1982, maybe, and paid 40 or 50 bucks a piece for them. Wow. I had somebody offer me $17,000 for one of them. Wow. You know, and you're like, Meh, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if I needed seventeen thousand dollars, I guess. Yeah, I'd yeah, be. like, uh, thanks. I'll keep your uh, contact information. I just like the, you know, I like. Which, which one? Which one was offered seventeen thousand for? The detective cover. Detective four forty eight. Wow. It's the coolest one. <laughs> I think I, that other person thinks so too. I like the others. I mean, it's just like, but I just, and yet the thing, it's like. There were more at shop when I bought these. You know, I I just bought these because it's like I like Jim Aparo and mm -hmm. I wanted one Batman, one Detective, and one Brave and the Bold. So I picked the ones that were there, my favorite of, from each of those titles. You know, in retrospect, I would have like just bought the whole stack of them. Sure, I sure, didn't but have that kind of money back then, though. That was the thing. It's like you know. Right. $150 was a lot of money when you're making $3 an hour, you know? Absolutely. You know, but you wanted to look around, right? So, yes, please. That would be great. So, I, oh, is, oh, Alex Ross. I love it. Yeah. So that, that's an Alex Ross original painting of Doc Savage. Let me try this way. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll put my mouth right above the mic. Yes. Uh, so this is an Alex Ross original painted cover from the Dynamite Doc Savage series. Can you aim the um, camera a little lower, just a little bit? Yeah, perfect. Oh, beautiful. And then this is a lithograph from the Warner Brothers store. Beautiful. On this wall, these are originals. <laughs> That's uh, Phil Noto, Black Widow. Oh, I've never even seen that before. Is that, wait, is that an original It's art? just a sketch. It's oh, just okay. a sketch. Um, it's a Bob Layton, Iron Man. Bob just Layton? a sketch yep. I got at the uh, con. Oh, nice. Medusa from an artist uh, that I, at Phoenix Con who, I don't even remember her name. I don't think she ever became a full-on pro, but it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. It's Medusa. Um, up in the corner there, if you can see it, that's a Kevin Nolan Batgirl. Oh, nice. Now, this 
big one here, if you can see it. Yeah. Can you see the whole thing? I, I can. That's an interesting one because Ron Randall did this. He has done a lot of different series over the years. He did Warlord after Mike Grill left. Okay. But I used to go and I'd get a sketch from him at San Diego Con every year. Ah, uh, uh-huh. So one year, you know, I went and I got... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Green Lantern is your favorite DC character. That's right. Yeah. So I got Flash and Green Lantern, and the next year, Batman and Superman. After a few years, I said, man, what if I get the whole Justice League, you know, the classic Justice League? And then I had the idea at one point, after I got the five and brought them in, and he, I, I kind of thumbnailed it for him. Oh, yeah. So I had, had him have do an idea. the red tornado on the one end with uh, – <laughs> elongated man's legs getting caught up in it. and then Zaytana on the other end. Oh, that's and great. He drew um, elongated man. I brought, he, uh, he'd been, I brought in all the, all the sketches together and he drew elongated man stretching through all of them. He added that element. Ah, uh, that's awesome. And uh, his buddy that he used to tape is a colorist named Steve Matson. And Steve Matson colored them all. For oh, them. okay. Wow. How long did this take to complete? Um, so two, four, five, like six or seven years. Wow. That's, that's incredible. So this is my shelf that's got a lot of my Carl Barks collection. Yeah, this is like the Disney shelf? Uh, the top two is my Carl. I like Carl Barks a lot. What so did what did he do? He did Donald Duck. He is the kind of acknowledged by people who like this sort of thing is like the definitive best uh, duck artist. Oh, interesting. He created Uncle Scrooge. Got it. Okay. Um, so that's the first Uncle Scrooge uh, comic there. Oh, wow. Um, those are the first couple Uncle Scrooges. And then, um, what else? I just got little Dark Horse statues there. and Very cool. Things You can see the spinner rack here. Love it. These are some. Oh, I see some Alex Rosses up there. This, uh, I'm actually not covering it. I'm just not got my face right in. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have the uh, setup. But it's it's cool. This is we'll roll with it. I'm gonna make it easy, so. Yeah, I just bought the. Uh, there were. Sorry, go ahead. There were one in twenty-five Alex Ross covers of that. That uh, there were like five of them. I only have two of them. I only have one um, of them. <laughs> so I'm. What else? What else I you got, got there, Bob? I got some of the U.S. Uh, Very cool. Now. These are some Joe. Oh, love those. The corner box variants. Experience. Yeah. These are mostly all autographed by Joe. What? Um, I saw him at uh, con a few years ago. I had dinner with him. Um, he, well, like you ate, you ate food with him? Yeah. What? Are you guys buddies? Not buddy buddies, but IDW was doing a, uh, got a sketch. Wait, wait, you said you got a sketch? But okay. He autographed a bunch of them for me. So, Very nice. And I, here's more. Oh, yeah, the Hulk one's my favorite. What else do I have? Yeah, here's some more over here. Lovely. Here's some Darwin Cook. Oh, yeah, RIP. Experience of the Justice League Gods and Monsters series. Oh, man, I really want one of those spinner racks. Oh, here we go. You even have a little light? Hey, I have that same uh, gold card. Those are cool, aren't they? Yeah, they are cool. I didn't realize they made one for like the Hulk one, Fantastic Four one. I have three of them. Um, I have the and This X Amazing one, yeah. Fantasy, I have Fantastic Four, and I have X-Men. I don't have the Hulk one. Oh, I don't. I think I only have uh, Amazing Spider-Man and X-Men one. I, yeah, the Hulk one's cool. I also like these statues. Oh, that's cool. Many years ago. 
are those uh, what brand of are those those aren't they were like right? diamond they were like diamond Your room is amazing, Bob. This is my stuff. Beautiful. I'm really uh, envious of your um, mini bus collection. Castell Grendel drawing by Matt Wagner. Um, some DC type of stuff. Lovely. Got my power battery there. Love it. Is that the biggest Green Lantern uh, thing you own? The battery, probably, yeah. Um, wow. Okay, so over here I've got a lot of busts, obviously. Oh I got almost all the Eagle Moth Marvel figures. Which ones are you missing? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Oh man! They started doing chests. Yeah, yeah. Guess how many mini bus I own, Bob? One. <laughs> I have almost three hundred Bowen mini bus. Three hundred. Three hundred. Wow. That's is that the largest mini bus collection in the world? Oh, probably. <laughs> Is who's this? Is this a Joe Jusco sketch? Wait, can you say it one more time, Bob? Gene Colan Dracula oh. pencil sketch. Wow. And then Fred from the Dracula magazine. Beautiful. Ray Colan. Um, this is a sketch of Senate Thor. Oh, all right. Um, I've got a Dick Ayers Ghost Rider there. Sick. Here is uh, Judith being born. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Shanna who's, from who's Tony. Shanna the She Devil from Tony De Zuniga. That's awesome. Usagi Ujimbo. Oh, nice. Who who did the Spider Man sketch there, Bob? That's John, John Romita Sr. Oh, awesome. You're you're living the dream, Bob. This is this is the dream comic book room. Some random stuff. Sure. Um, oh, this is a painting by Glenn Fabre. A lot wow. of preacher covers. I've never seen, seen that seen. before. Sinister Six? I, yep. Beautiful. I, I would have guessed that was a, anywhere. It's just a painting. That he did. I would have guessed that that was um, uh, Simone Bianchini. It's not, um, but it's original. It's a rid not a print. It's an original painting. Oh my god! I love the red and blue frame. By the way, I had the frame done. <laughs> yeah, it's it's beautiful. I had done. Oh man, your uh, collection is amazing, Bob. Oh, Stan Lee. Oh, you got the uh, Jack Kirby Stan Lee bus. Those are, I've been trying to find those. I put, I put Stan with, you know, so these are all the original uh, versions of the creations, right? Put yeah, I like it. Half, and then I put Stan, Spider-Man, Iron Man, and of course, had to use the yellow Daredevil costume. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's clever, Bob. And then I got my original. That's sweet. There was the Guinness Wait, oh, oh, yeah. I was wondering what Guinness gave you. I was like, did they give you a plaque? Did they give you a medal? I like the certificate. Um, like... Yeah, very cool. That better not be an original uh, it's a, cape. It's a reproduction. Okay, all right. Here's my big Stan Lee story uh, in the Lucite holder. That's Stan's secret from behind the comics from the 40s. Yeah. 
How many times have you met him, Bob? Six or seven. This is the first time in this picture. Uh huh. I was much younger. <laughs> it was kind of cool because uh, Stan is a really good guy, and he is very, um, very chatty with his fans. I agree. And, you know, in the later years, his handlers, you know, their job was to, like, keep people away from Stan. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. spend too much time with anybody and keep the line moving and keep the money flowing from all the autographs. Yep. The first time I met him was at a Long Beach con, like, 2003, which, I mean, he was Stan, but it was before he was Stan, you know? He hadn't been right. in all the Marvel movies at that point. Yeah. Um, and everybody else had brought, there weren't that many people. I mean, it was surprisingly few people. I mean, I yeah. stood in a line, but there were yeah. maybe... You weren't waiting, you weren't waiting hours something. for him, and you weren't paying, no, like, I, $200. It was free. There was no right. charge to get a, a yeah. signature, you know? Yep. So I went up and got my autograph, and everybody else was bringing key books, you know, like Spider-Man 50 and, you know, yeah. yep. all these things. I brought up Amazing Spider-Man 88. Your first? My first comic I bought for myself off the rack. Um, and he looks at it, and he's like, why this one? <laughs> yeah, he said that. He said, I don't think I've seen this since I wrote it. Do you mind if I look through it? I go, help yourself. You wrote it. Oh, and he's that's... like flipping through it. And he's like, look, oh, that was funny when I wrote that. You know, and he's like, and he's like, why did you pick this one? And I told him, you know, it was the first one I bought for myself off the spinner rack at the local store. And I've been buying comics every week since. He's like, oh, come around and get a picture with me. You know, he came around and he put his arm around my shoulders had one of the he touched guys. you yeah he put his arm around my shoulder and then he had like gave my camera to the guy who was help running the line and he said take a picture oh my so, gosh it was awesome so, do, you know, do you know what my first uh interaction with stan was it it was uh across a very long table and then me giving my thing to a handler and then the handler giving it to stan and then stan pushing it back to the handler and then the handler giving it back to me and then that was it. Couldn't talk yeah. to him, couldn't touch him, couldn't take a photo with him. Right. That was like, I, and I had a lot of, I had those interactions with him in later years as well. Um, to, you know. to this day, I feel like I don't really know if I met him because I, for a while, was like, was that really him or was that just like a, a stand in? Was it like just like a, a look alike? Like, you know, if you don't hear him talk, then you don't really know. You, like, it's the voice to me. That identifies yeah. it's him and if i don't hear his voice it could just be any old guy yeah it was it was he was very forthcoming you know and like he had a whole conversation with me you know about that issue and he looked through it and was talking about different pages in it and stuff i mean it was it was pretty amazing and again it wasn't a really long line so it's not like you felt like you were holding anybody up right um you know then i had other interactions with him that were similar to yours where you know he was signing for something and you know it's like don't look stan directly in the eye you know yeah yeah uh, yeah you, know, you couldn't shake his hand they said you had to fist bump him. something you have to give it to the handler and the handler yeah. does it and, and all of that the last time i met him uh was at the toshin uh thing because toshin put out Oh, the book, the book publisher. Really, yeah, yeah. These, yeah, they, they do all these really cool books. I mean, it's like this book here is amazing. This is the one that a Stan Lee story, if you see it. Yeah, the one in the case, right? In the case. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, the oversized. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So that was like, I think it came out, it came out actually after um it came out after just, he passed they had just finished it before he passed away mm. he the signature plates in it and he was actually they brought him the thing and he was talking to benedict 
Hashin, who runs that publishing house. Um, and that was, but then he passed away in December. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, but that book, like, was originally supposed to be, like, $1,300 or something like that. Only, huh? And when it came out, it was actually started immediately going for much more because, you know, we had passed it and it was, like, probably the last things he signed was this book. Um, and, I mean, I got mine free, but because I contributed a lot of the items that are in there. Oh, wow. Um, you That's know, cool. they, for that super deluxe version, they have bound, they have, they did a reproduction of the secrets behind comics, right? Mm -hmm. The book, and they used my copy to make that reproduction. Wow. Um, they had bound in, in the deluxe version, all throughout the book, they have bound in like Amazing Spider-Man 50, a whole copy of it bound into the book. Mm -hmm. And it's my Spider-Man 50 they used to make that reproduction copy. Oh, really? Sorry. It's fine. So I, I actually was, several times I would work with the guys from Tasha and the guy would just send me a um, spreadsheet with like, four or five hundred comics in it and say can I borrow these and I'm like sure and I'd pick them out from my collection and they'd send an intern down or he'd come down um, so like scan them or something or yeah and they'd take them and they'd photograph them and scan them and do whatever that's awesome so, so you're like I, I'm starting to realize you're kind of becoming like an archivist you know yeah, so like, I'm credited in those books so it's actually fun I mean you know I just I don't get anything for doing this, but I mean, I will recommend these books. I mean, they're awesome. Like they came out with this one, much cheaper. Um, can you, can you aim it down a little lower, Bob? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. I don't think I've seen this book. Can you show the cover one more time? Yeah. Oh, I see. This is, oh, that's the same book. Oh, that's, oh, I love the foil treatment. That is an epic portrait. Wait, what, what's he holding? Oh my God, what a badass. A tarantula, amazing. I'm assuming he is. The thing, the thing about it is that he, that one, and it might even be cheaper now, but that was like, I'll say only, right? It was like $200, I think. But it's huge. If you're a Stan Lee fan, it's well worth it. Oh, absolutely. It's amazing. And uh, Caution has done, I got to get up again. I got to show you these other things. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Please. You're making me want to go buy these books, Bob. Stop selling them to me. Well, they did these. They're really cheap. That's pretty cute. They're like 10 bucks, maybe. And they're just all full of, like, and, like, pretty much all the stuff in here is from books in my collection. So, huh? I kind of, I kind of like them because they're almost like an archival representation of my collection because i loaned them all the comics oh, right 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 to make these books yeah right? yeah yeah. like they're cataloging your catalog <laughs> but you know they need somebody because like my books generally aren't all in cgc slabs yeah i'm not picky about you know if they want to borrow them it's like okay fine i'm i'm cool you know <laughs> it's like yeah so i loan them all kinds of stuff to make these comic book projects with, which is kind of handy because then they give me comp copies of, I mean, they don't pay me, but I don't care. I mean, they give me comp copies. Hell, just getting that Stan Lee book, getting an artist proof copy of that Stan Lee book, you know, yeah. it's worth a absolutely. Couple of grand, you know, it's just like that was worth everything I ever did with them. But what I was going to say is when they did the, 
the 50 years of Marvel com or the yeah the big Marvel comic history one from the Silver Age to current. Mm -hmm. um, they did a big signing for that. Roy Thomas wrote it, you know, and it's Stan and Roy. Yeah. So they did a big thing at the Beverly Hills caution store. So I went to that event and it was the same thing. Stan's handlers were there and oh, okay. they're like, don't look Stan directly in the eye and don't do this and don't do that. <laughs> Stan and Roy were signing yeah, yeah. books, right? And we stood, I went with some friends and when, when I got up there, the guy who worked for Toshin who put the book together, his name's Josh, he's actually won Eisner Awards for his design on some of these books. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, so he was there. And when I got up, he's like, Stan, this is Bob. He's the guy who donated, who loaned us all the comics to, you know, not all of them because they had some golden age. Sure, stuff. sure. But he, he loaned us a lot of the books to help make this book. And he also has the Guinness World Record and all this. And Stan's like, oh, cool. And he stands up and he shakes my hand. And Roy shakes my hand. And they actually talk to me a little bit. And uh, the handler gave us the dirtiest look. <laughs> really? <laughs> we didn't care because <laughs> we broke protocol and, you know. Spoke with yeah, Josh. yeah, yeah. But Josh did it for me because he knew that, you know, because he had actually worked with Stan on putting the book together. You know, he had gone to Stan's office and mm -hmm. sat at, you know, hours of interaction time with Stan and he knew how big of a Stan fan I was. So he, <laughs> Stan he fan. did that, he did that inter he did that introduction. For yeah. Me. Yeah. But he's a really good guy. Um, so it, it was fun. I mean, I, I like doing that kind of stuff. It's just, there's so many fun things like that, that, you know, I, I kind of look at it as like when I did my uh, Guinness thing where we counted the, the books and had the event because you have to do a public event mm. i did it a few weeks after the long beach con and i handed out flyers at the long beach con inviting people to come and see it but i like had called through my collection for like double comics you know because i could only count one copy of each and i had bought lots of <laughs> lots right of right i gave away like five long boxes full of comic books only, huh? Only f that's basically my entire collection. Um, but it's just like I had all these extra comics, and people came by. I had pizza and chips and soft drinks, and you that's know, cool. Was, there were like maybe forty or fifty people came by over the course of the day. Were these um, were these like other people from other parts of the world, or just in the country? No, just people from. I mean, because again, you didn't necessarily know about it. it like, because I. I handed out flyers at the Long Beach Comic Con, so it's just like people from Southern California, probably. Oh, I see. I who see. Been at the con. Yeah, but yeah. You yeah. had to have a you had to have an event, right, for Guinness. To, really? Huh. Yeah. You had to have a public event. Like so, announcing and, that you won? Is it or like what, what do you mean? Like no, an just to to document that I'm just like not sitting off in a you know, corner somewhere making a bunch of shit up. I mean, like witnesses, you know, I had everybody who came signed a log book that they, you know, you know, I, I kind of walked everybody through the collection and. Oh, so know. this was part of like, part of the, uh, the little circus you had to go through. Yeah, to the, exactly. Got it. Got it. So again, it's like, it's kind of stuff that like, it's kind of a barrier to entry for a lot of people. Cause like I said, it's kind of a, a lot of stuff that had to go on to, to get this you know yeah well you mentioned three years like to yeah, it was it was a long time well also because i didn't want to pay anything right if i would have paid money to expedite you know things it would have like gone a lot faster hmm. i just like did the free option which is like when they get around to it you know, they'll do stuff you know? yeah yeah well i mean it's like when you when you applied or submitted like did you actually think this was gonna happen did you think because you said that they didn't have a category before um before you applied and so well i actually... sent the application and i didn't hear back from them for like six months that's that's like a lifetime so you know i just forgot about it and then they got back to me and they sent me like 
here's all the rules and everything, and here's all the stuff you have to do. And then I had to look at all that stuff, and I'm like, You're like, is this worth it? How the hell am I going to do all this stuff? You know, I had to like have a video of doing this. So it's like one of my son's friends videoed it for me and put together a video and that we sent in with the package. And I had to have the uh, like independent experts validating it. So I had the guy from my local comic shop who owned the shop for 25 years and was an expert and I had this other guy who had a um, podcast and website down in San Diego who is also an accountant he's the guy who did the verified count you yeah know, yeah it's like I had to pull together all these kind of resources myself yeah so, yeah right like you know I get like proof right sure, you know, sure. It's just like if I wasn't gonna pay Guinness to do it I had to provide oh, I see. people that they were, that they approved of. Got it. Okay. Those same role. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Independent third party verifiers of the stuff. And gotcha. then I okay. a video of, you know, all this verification happening so that they know that it wasn't all being fake. Right. 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 Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, I get it. Like from their point of view, they're, they're trying to cover their, their butts, yeah. right. They want to make sure yeah, they, 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 they have a lot of prestige for being a legitimate, you know, world record organization it's not just some dude says well i have two hundred thousand comics you know it's like, yeah yeah okay, right anybody can say anything especially on the internet right yeah yeah so like proving it that takes a certain amount of effort yeah that makes sense a um, lot of effort <laughs> yeah know? well i'm i'm really glad you stuck with it you know um and i want to like did you feel like you became like a celebrity after like yeah. once it was published in the book, did you feel like any different? I'm amazed at how little people who run comic conventions could not give a shit. <laughs> like, yeah, because you would, I, I, I thought that people who run comic conventions would be actually kind of impressed. Nobody who runs a comic convention gives the slightest damn. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest, Bob. I agree with you. You're right because I didn't. You you won this in 2015, and I only I only learned about you like last week. Yeah, it's just like I mean, at the time, I had like I kind of kept track. I was like in a bunch of like news articles, and sure. people picked it up because Guinness put it out. And then when Guinness did their little um, video where they sent out uh, that model, Asher, Wonder Woman, yeah. I think her name was, and mm -hmm. I mean, she comes with her crew, and it's fine, and then she's, oh, do you have some place I can change, and it'll change, and it's like, and she puts on this Wonder Woman costume, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, I mean, I've yeah, watched sure. her, like, other ones, she, like, goes around, she was working for Guinness, I, I watched her, like, you know, with the guy who, like, ate 20 hamburgers in five minutes or something, you know, it's just, like, <laughs> she would go around and do these different things with yeah uh, yeah you know with guinness but then like yahoo sent a crew out one time and did a little thing and i got like a little bit but it's just like you know the comic conventions they seem to be more interested in like because comics don't really printed comics right that doesn't drive their attendance you know the yeah the TV shows and movies drive attendance but you would you would think that the but but you would think that know. like the Guinness World Record, you know that that alone would be, you know, like you throw that in front of anything and people automatically like okay all right why aren't you why why didn't you have a panel at like a uh, San Diego Comic Con or something why weren't they like hey you want to give a talk no <laughs> like so well, you know I thought that some conventions would say hey do you want to come to our convention and talk about this right oh, so well, like, okay. Still waiting for the phone to ring. Well, I'm going to be, I was very shocked by how little, how, how very few YouTube videos are online of you and just how many articles are out. Like, you know, it's like, you know, there's the Guinness site and then there's like maybe two others, but th that, that was it. I was like, oh, uh, I thought I would have like a ton of like information on you, but really there, there isn't that much, not even on the Guinness site, there isn't that much written about you. Yeah, I mean, they asked me a bunch of questions one time and put it out. I mean, I've been in several editions of the book, um, you know, so it's, it's kind of fun in that respect, but you know, it's just, it's kind of a fun thing. Oh yeah, I mean. I'd, I mean, I'd love to go to a con and talk about building a collection, but you know, that's the other thing. I get contacted all the time 
but it's the I just got contacted the other day by a new site that's coming up about high end collectibles and they okay. wanted like they want to talk about how much my collection's worth and what you know value this value that and I just declined. I said that's just not I, I don't have anything against people who all the you know who want to collect things that are really expensive but I don't focus on what things are worth. Yeah. I focus yeah. on how much fun it is to read the comics and the stories and the characters and you know all that kind of stuff and it's like I'll be frank, you know, I've got a, let's say I've got 115,000 comic books. There's some guy out there that's got 500 comics that are worth triple what my 115,000 comics are worth. Sure, sure. Right? It's just like, you know, if you want to look at value, I don't have a value collection. Here's my DCBS box. Ooh, an unboxing video. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. Let's see what we got. What's in the box, Bob? Oh, that's awesome. Thanks again for watching. If you'd like to watch more interviews, click here. For everything else, click here. I'll wait. Just, just click one of these buttons and end my suffering.